All right, we're here. We're here. So I'm Demetrius. And I'm Demetrius. And Meet Meet presents the Blurred City Podcast. All right. So in today's episode, we are doing episode six of Ahsoka, our weekly reviews, meaning we have two more to go after this one. So with this, we are getting into Far, Far Away. It was a huge episode, two at minimum big reveals. Um, other things that we're going to get to as we break down the episode. Once again, these aren't supposed to be hour long episodes. In fact, we're like really on a time crunch. So <laughs> we're going to be speeding through some of the plot, but we're going to cover the big, big main things. So with that, hit us with the legal spiegel. The purpose of this podcast is to explore digital and print media. All sources we reference are owned by their respective companies, and our thoughts and opinions are strictly our own and reflect no biases and with corporate agendas. Your discretion is advised. All right. So as we always start our weekly recaps, we talk about the pulse of the people. So this is how generally how people kind of feel about the episode. Um, both of us try not to get too deep into just the reviews and how people feel um, in order not to like kind of spoil our own opinions before recording. But it's mostly just like, how do people feel about the episode? So Meech, what have you been hearing? So I've been hearing like, again, people are saying like, this show is constantly cooking. Um, at first, we like, of course, last week was probably the biggest episode of all time. This is a, that's the Clone Wars uh, for the Clone Wars fans. This episode's for the Rebels fans. So so if you were in love with either show, you got an episode for each uh, series and you and just you're just eating right now like I am. Yeah, for my pulse of the people, again, like last week, like people are still talking about it. But even this week, like the reveal of like we'll get to it in the reviews. But if you, you're listening to this episode, you know who who, who, who to popped up. So if he has to with that. So with that, um, yeah, let's just jump into the recap. So you want to kick it off? Oh, yeah. So. So firstly, we have it starts off with uh with Ahsoka and Huang pretty much talking in the inside their ship, which is inside the Purgle's mouth, which are in hyperspace right now. And they're pretty much just chatting. Ahsoka's just basically voicing her concern by the fact that uh, that Sabine decided to roll with the ops in order to find Ezra. And she's just having doubts about herself again, kind of, and you're just like didn't you just get over this uh, last episode? But but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But and then it caps off with because this is the last time you see them for this episode. So it ends with just Huyang want, basically wanted to give her like a story to pass the time. And it starts with some very familiar words and a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. That was one of the best openings to a show I have seen. I'm just like, hey, yo, I was like, all right, you just gonna, uh, you just gonna take the the opening, like, you, where's, yeah, you gonna do the music next? You gonna, uh, <laughs> you gonna do the entire title crawl? Mm-hmm. Uh, but and then it cuts over to to what the plot of the episode is. So the Eye of Scion, the ship that uh the ops are are located at, they a tra- traveled out of hyperspace and land on the planet of Petadia. And Petadia is uh, messed up for multiple reasons. Number one, this is where Pergil go to die. So essentially, you know, like how essentially how some dogs like they will leave their owners when they know their time is coming and go to a specific area to just basically die at. Um, this is that for the for the space whales, and literally the ring of the planet are their dead carcasses, which is pretty metal. I'm not even gonna. I'm going to hold you about that. What other planet you think of has corpses for their rings? We might need to check what, what's going on in Saturn. Bruh. No, no, no. It's Uranus that I, I think has the bigger problem. Because, <laughs> uh, But yeah, and then also number two, apparently this is the original homeworld of the Night Sisters. And you're just like, excuse me? Mm-hmm. So you're saying that the Night Sisters came from a separate galaxy this whole time, which would actually make sense if you think about it. Yeah, considering like their magic capabilities and semi attunement with the Force, but it's mostly magic based. It, it makes sense, but this is actually kind of a big retcon. Uh, mm-hmm. is because of the fact like before that we just knew that they were, like we just thought they were just another pe- set of people in the galaxy. Now we know that they're extra galactic. So mm-hmm. so that's so that uh that already raised up reveal number reveal number one 
it's a mini reveal, but it's a reveal nonetheless. Yes. And when they when they touch down on the planet, they end up meeting the great mothers. Yes, the three sisters, the three witches from Macbeth. <laughs> so yeah, with that, we also see that Balin he initially talks to Sabine. She's like, "Hey, you're supposed to keep your promise," because um, she's like locked up, locked up, not what she thought was going to happen. Sabine. You got one more week, and I'm about to give you an award. I'm going to hold off this week, but I'm going to give you an award. So with that, um, yeah, they land on the planet. The sisters are like, nah, I smell Jedi on her. She an op. You got to go to jail. So they use kind of like their magic to kind of, even though she's in cuffs, they add an additional level of security <laughs> to that. Take her away. I respect it. I respect it. Yes, that's being smart. So then you see uh, Morgana. She is like, hey, uh, is is he here? Is he here? Am, am I going to get to see Thrawn? And they're like, you will wait. So mm-hmm. that was pretty cool. But I think we can kind of speed along past that, which was what I really loved about this episode, because we're going to get to the big reveal now and then I'll let you take over. Thrawn appears like maybe a third way through the episode. I did not think they were going to do that. So we get the reveal of Big Blue. Woo! All right. So, so it cuts to Sabine. She in her prison, in her chains, atop of chains. And she's thinking like, all right, let me see if I can use the force to uh, blast this door open. And you hear some rumbling. At first, you it made you to believe like she's using the force, but nah. It's it's the Chimera, baby. Mm-hmm. The Star Destroyer that Thrawn used and, and he got sent to the into exile with. And the Chimera has seen better days. I'm not even going to hold you because uh, that, it looked, derelict it looked like it was it, it basically was zombified and i'm using zombified for a good reason all right mm-hmm. so so and then it cuts to inside where where morgan and Bala and everybody they're just like and then it opens up and you just see a cavalcade of troopers yes all all sporting broken armor that's been like uh stitched together i forgot the japanese technique that that people actually used to like seal up cracks and fix things but um, but it's always very reminiscent of a certain kylo ren when he fixed his helmet uh but and then it it cuts to a very specific uh trooper whose mask is like different from the others said it was a gold face on it i'm just like hold up who is you um who are you and then it turns out his name is enoch i'm like hey yo <laughs> you're in biblical t- we t- we getting biblical up in here. All right, all right. See how it is. See how it is. And 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 big boy, the man, the myth, the legend himself, seconds only Vader in terms of infamy. Big Daddy Thrawn is is in the house. Yes, I I will have to say this kind of goes back to like what I was talking about in the first episode. I have not seen a character in universe, not like out of universe, that has had people on like. <laughs> like gassing him up like any other character other than Thrawn like even Vader like people that are under Vader are like oh my god Lord Vader might pop up I hope he doesn't pop up like like terrified and kind of Palpatine yeah and they kind of Palpatine as much but they don't really talk about Palpatine but with Thrawn it's like yo if Thrawn pops up it's popping off man (laughs) we're safe the Empire is back we're good get Thrawn over here make the Empire great again Yeah, Mega. <laughs> so yeah, so he pulls up, and you already know it's like it's like that. So um, he talks to Earl Morgan, um, talks to Balin, and also before that, we see Balin. He's talking to uh, Shin, right? Yep. Earlier, and he's like, "I sent something." He says it multiple times, but at like the beginning of it, I was like, he he said he wanted to end the cycle, and I thought of pain, and I was like, Nagato, our boy. So he's wielding an orange saber. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'm very interested to see how they end his arc these next uh, two episodes, knowing that, you know, the the real life actor passed away, unfortunately. So that's going to be definitely interesting to take a look at. So with that, um, Thrawn pulls up. He's like, hey, uh, well, they bring Sabine to him because she could be still helpful. He's like, hey, thank you for helping me. Um, I'm gonna give you a mouth. I'm gonna give you some provisions. You go look for Ezra. I'm gonna get up out of here. <laughs> and then he pulled a full scar from Lion King as soon as she dipped. Oh, oh yeah. And this is typical Thrawn behavior. He is he is doing chess moves. 
uh, and everybody else is just playing checkers. You you never you never take this man at face value because he has plans on top of plans. You know what his plan is? All right. Thank you for freeing me. Thank you for uh, simping all of your way to uh, wow. releasing me into the galaxy. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. And for your thanks, I will send uh, I'll send you to go meet, go find Ezra. I'll give you everything you need. And unfortunately, uh, as soon as he left, as he said, he's he said, like, Balin, Shin, as soon as they she finds him, go handle him. Nice. I, and then on top of that, as soon as they leave, mm-hmm. he talks with Morgan. It's like, yeah, so it's it's about time we leave out of here and just know that uh not only is Sabine and Ezra gonna get got, but Balin and Shin as well. Like, you know, we we can't leave we leaving zero loose ends out here. He's like, yo, if they don't make it back in time, it is what it is. So we leave it's zero crazy. loose ends out here. Yeah. So I guess we can kind of touch on Sabine before the other big reveal. But Sabine, she's like riding a howler, which is essentially a wolf. They come across some right. Ra- well, she comes across some raiders takes them out uh, in the Mandalorian Jedi style, which I actually like her fighting style, uh, just like how she's able to blend those two. Um, if she does get the Force, she's going to be OP. But just kind of with that, she gets it, and then she meets... Uh, I wrote it down because it was like a, a weird word for it, but it's like a turtle thing. It's like a tutine or a, a noti. That that was like the language it said. So meets a little noti. Uh, looks like a turtle slash snail combined together, um, and it recognizes the kind of crest on her arm. Um, her armor or her the uniform. Alien. Yes. So with that, they kind of recognize that whole squad of people. So then they take it to the village and then we get the next big reveal. I'll, I'll let you go a bit deeper to it, but we see our boy Ezra full, um, full bearded up. And then Sabine was looking at him like he was a whole snack. So, so you can't take it away. <laughs> You can't just give me that. Oh, oh. You can't just leave me at that. Okay, okay. So essentially, right. So yeah, she, they pop up. She in the village and she sees her mans for the first time in like at least 10 years, right? That's wild. Yeah. yeah. Again, at least 10 years. And as such, like she fiending for him. She fiending. Simp of the week. And with that, right, uh, essentially like, and this is kind of where the tragedy of the episode starts because Ed was like, Oh man, it took you long enough to find me. You know, they're they're hugging in the way that uh the the scene was shot with the no T. It kind of looked like they were, you know, about to kick they were smooching on each other, but it, it wasn't like that. At least as far as I know. Um, Not yet. <laughs> but but like it says you're like, okay, it's great for me to be able to get home. And it's like, hey, how did you find me? How'd you how'd you get that howler? How'd you how'd you get how'd you get here? And she's brushing off all of his questions, like, hey, 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 don't don't worry about she using that Mr. Miyagi wax on, wax off, full counter. It's like we deflecting because it's like, hold on, hold on. And and the gaslighting starting to become real too. I, I face said gaslighting before. It's like, hold on, like, don't worry about all that. Can't you just let me be happy for once? Like, yo, the beer. <laughs> you know the you was like so you just gonna not tell him that uh that that Thrawn is about to be free out this mug but nah but but it's okay it's okay okay but uh but yeah so essentially it cuts over to Balin and Shin and they're pretty much just like yeah uh there's something about this planet of Paradia some greater power. And I want it. And you just hear like, what is this man's end goal? Uh, I don't want to talk about predictions yet. So we can keep going. Yeah. Like that's just a question that uh, that is just going to get posed. Like, what is this man's end goal? Uh, and then he finds like a, a bunch of Raiders and just like, and the Shin was ready to ready to do what she do best is ready to mark them. But, but he's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, enemy of my enemy. Am I right? And yes. so like they, they probably looking for uh the person who who put their boys in a pack. So, hey, let's let's go ahead and help him out. Let's go ahead and help him out. And yeah. then finally, it goes over to Thrawn and Thrawn and uh and Morgan. Essentially, the Night Sisters. They told 
they tell, or the great mothers, I'm sorry, tell, tell Thrawn's like, hey, uh, we got a situation. Um, it looked like there's a Jedi approaching with the Purgles. And Thrawn being Thrawn, you can tell he, he not sweating at all. He not sweating at all. He's just like, you know what? That's going to that's gonna pose a problem. Morgan, handle that. <laughs> yes. As soon as you see one, blow it out the sky. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's where the episode's in. You know, what I love about Thrawn and his introduction, I don't know if you saw the first season of uh, Jessica Jones. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so like, uh, what was his name? Kilgrave, right? Yep. So with characters like that, where it's like they're not really like throwing hands, you know, Thanos level, like, I'll just beat you up, where they're so manipulative and like mental. And it's like, I know that like, where, where, where he's like, hey, Sabine, you could pull out a lightsaber right now and kill me, but you're not. And here's why. And then I have so many, like you mentioned, schemes on top of schemes as to like, you have to go through this maze in order to get to me. And it's like, <laughs> like, he's not even, um, wait, wait, wait. Moff Gideon, Moff Gideon. Yeah, Moff Gideon. Yeah, Gideon. But where he's not even like Moff Gideon, where it's like, yo, I'm gonna put on like, uh, the, take the dark saber for myself, put on this armor and stuff like that, where he's just like, yo, I'm really going to manipulate you to do my bidding and I'm going to be untouchable at the same time. So that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, that's, that's only a taste of what this man can do. Like, I, see it. I think like this is this is like a great introduction to the character in live action. Like, uh, I don't know if you noticed this about him. He did not blink once. I got to rewatch, but yeah, he re-watch. was that like that silent intensity. Yeah, yeah, he did not blink once, which is in line with his race. Like they they legit do not blink. Which I'm like, kudos to kudos to the detailing on this man. Dang, that's hard. <laughs> I like this, like he, like as soon as he popped up on screen, I, I just went, I, I, I immediately went to salute. It's like t- turn coat. <laughs> it, it ain't my fault. He, he exudes that. I will do that. Well, with Vader, I'll bow down. But uh, they, when you exude that much him energy, mm-hmm. where it makes people like me just, just like, just, just freeze up and tense up because, because of the fact I know like. In Legends, this man was a monster. Mm-hmm. In canon, he was still a monster. So yeah. Lord knows what's about to happen in the show. And I like how you mentioned like it's a taste, and like obviously he's supposed to be the big villain at the end of like the Dave Filoni uh, movies and everything. But what's so interesting is that like the moment we we know he's going to get to the new galaxy. Um, so the moment he gets to the new galaxy and gets confirmed, all those sleeper cells are about to pop up, which is about to be crazy. So anything else you want to cover uh, outside of Thrawn that before we get to like different awards and predictions and stuff? Oh, oh man. I think uh, another thing, man, again, just, well, everything I'm about to say is li- what that was about to say is literally going to be in predictions and questions. So okay. let, let's move it on. All I will say is that with Sabine and her character, as someone ha- that has not previously watched Rebels, a lot of people that have have promised that her character is something different than what is portrayed because right now she is simping to a level that is harmful to the galaxy. So we're going to move forward with the awards of the week. So what awards do you have? I, of course, I have to give big, big off of the week. Grand introduction. Both those awards going to Thrawn. I am him. Black Air Force activity. It all goes to Thrawn. <laughs> <laughs> he only been in this episode a few minutes, and he already took over, stole the whole show. The spotlight is yours. That award goes right to him. Everything is Thrawn's, and he and he rightfully deserves it because, jeez, mm-hmm. jeez, this man is different. Yeah, I, he obviously <laughs> has to get off of the week. I mean, they like built six episodes to get to this, and like it was as promised. So, uh, there's biggest idiot of the week, but I'm holding on to it. We know you got two more episodes to be, so we're just going to hold on. Two episodes um, for redemption. Yes. Uh, and then Simp of the Week obviously goes to her as well. And then also to our third uh, guest that sometimes pop up on these reviews. So. <laughs> yeah, you know she's going to she gonna come after you for that one. I, I, I did not co-sign at all, but... Uh, I, I said no names. I did not co-sign at all on this. You, you know who... You know who we're referring to. Um, we're just going to keep it moving. Just yes. To big questions of the week. So to those that have been listening every week, you kind of understand that, again, this 
question can relate to the show or, or it can be like a bigger picture view that's loosely related to the show. So, Meech, what, what's your big question of the week? All right. Number one is, again, what is Balin's end goal? Is it like... Like, is he trying to, because from like how he was talking and how he was like saying everything, especially the line about like how, like when Shan was saying like, oh yeah, you were raised by the Jedi Order and like Sabine was raised to be a, no, no, Ezra was raised to be a Jedi, but Shan was raised to not? Wasn't the term Boken Jedi that they used for uh, Ezra? Yes, a Boken Jedi because of fact, like he was trained, but he, he wasn't formally trained mm -hmm. kind of kind of similar to what what sabine is mm -hmm. essentially just learning in the field on the fly uh by a nun jedi master um but yeah there's that so like what's his end game and like his like for me it was kind of like is he trying to like start his own order that that is like separated separate from everything else to cut the cut the ties of the Jedi and war. Like he's gonna create his own order that literally just does his own thing. Mm -hmm. What's this great power that he's sensing? Because I've seen like a few predictions out there that like this great power is like is like a source of dark side like a large dark side nexus that Palpatine was trying to uh trying to reach while he was I saw alive. that yeah. Mm -hmm. but but again that's just a theory and that's kind of somewhat loosely based on legends as well um but yeah that's 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 number two number three how's Ezra gonna react to when Sabine spills the beans is is a relationship gonna sour a bit uh is he gonna be the one to finish her training uh -huh. <laughs> yeah is he gonna be the one to finish her training to uh to Jedi this or is she and speaking of Jedi-ness, is she even going to be a Jedi in the first place? Because she's doing all this training, right? But she's still, like, exhibiting all of her Mandalorian nature. Mm -hmm. Like, Mandalorian nature number one is not leaving anybody behind and valuing the comrade over the mission. Mandalorian nature number two, using weapons out the, out the wazoo that's not a lightsaber. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, she's breaking that rule because she's trying to train to be Jedi, but but that's neither here nor there. Uh, and three is like putting her emotions first rather than anything else. But that's that's more of a old Jedi teaching. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, and then probably my next question is, and this was kind of like more of a large scope. Well, two of them are. This one is like if the Night Sisters originate in a separate galaxy this really opens up the door to say what other species were extra galactic as well Ooh. and with and with that as a statement that poses the question like who else who else could have started off like not in the star wars galaxy it's true is it, is it just the night sisters were was it like could the Huts be from a separate galaxy? Could it uh be like could Palpatine's like bloodline be from a separate galaxy? We don't know. You mean race bloodline? We don't acknowledge that, but uh as I said, the Palpatine bloodline does it originate in a separate galaxy? <laughs> the Skywalkers originate in a separate galaxy. And Anakin is Jesus, so force Jesus. <laughs> so exactly. And also, where's the rest of the chiss? I need the rest of of spawn species to to pop off because the chiss ascendancy is are demons in their own right. Uh I mean they're not as not as bad as Thrawn is. I don't think they could ever get to where he is, but but they are on like similar wavelengths. It's like <laughs> Big Daddy Thrawn is like up here. They are like here. As the audience can't see us because it's oh. not a visual podcast. Oh yeah. So essentially like if if Thrawn is a 10, they're like a seven. Okay. There we go. All right. And and that was, and and like when world Thrawn gonna do when he gets back in the galaxy and what what's gonna happen to him then? And that's my questions. What you got? All right. So the Baylor one was definitely like one of my questions. I I gotta see about it. We can talk more about it in predictions. Uh for my my big question, Meech, uh this is 
towards you. One of the first big questions aimed at you. Are you sacrificing the galaxy to save me? You know, see, there is, there is, I mean, I'm already sacrificing the galaxy it is because you've got, I'm a, <laughs> see, hey, you, Eric. Paulina, the Afro-Rough Samurai, and, and some other people have been claiming that I'm a villain. Right. And I'm tired of these accusations. So if y'all want me to be the villain, I will become the villain and sacrifice the whole galaxy just for my own entertainment. Okay. So would I sacrifice the galaxy for you? Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure I would. Uh -uh. I feel like you're doing it for yourself. Not Don't, for me. <laughs> don't worry about it, okay? I I do what I want. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> all right. That was, that was all my that was my question. So with that, we can get into our predictions for next week and then the big picture view. Um, I want to talk more about Balin. I don't think it'll be the Yuzhan Vaughn just because of the next trilogy. It, like yeah, that shift is too radical. I feel like, but it's uh, really. maybe the first order, like maybe Thrawn gets access to that dark nexus. But I know it's not really like if it is a dark nexus, but that wasn't really like a thing in the um the new trilogy. The new trilogy, so I'm not sure entirely like what he's looking for, and then whatever it is he's looking for, he wants it specifically for uh himself to stop war but we don't know if stop war means if in it's sukiyomi stop war or naruto take on eight of the world <laughs> um stop war or murder everybody and oh well, yeah and be the and be be him uh ripped the universe war. to every single atom <laughs> exactly that's my way of doing it um so with that right uh i yeah that's a really great a top really great question again i i don't who knows what in the world this means? Who in the world knows what Filoni's cooking up? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Also, I feel like Shin, there might be a divide at some point between them. It's not, like, blatant, but it just seems like cookie crumbs, if so. Yeah, I kind of see that, too. Like, because, I mean, you see, like, their dynamic. Like, she still confides in him, and he's confiding in her, but it's like, he's more subdued, but she's, like, more ready to like more ready to get into action she saw the witch the mothers and she was like more witches so yeah 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 like if you want to think in like uh an analogy a gaming analogy while balin is sub-zero mm. shin is like frost hey, from I mk11 know. so if you know you know uh, I like that. yeah so so yeah uh yeah do you have any other questions or only other, I mean, I feel like it's definitely Ahsoka is going to pull up next episode just because of how they hinted at it. Uh, big picture overall ending, Thrawn has to get back, but I don't know if the season ends with um, Ahsoka reunited with Sabine and also Ezra, like, having to play catch up to Thrawn. Like, like say Thrawn leaves at the end of episode seven, and then they have to like chase them by the end of episode eight. So that's kind of like my only big thing, I would think. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That okay, good predictions. Well, good predictions. So for me, at least for the next episode, we definitely need to, uh, uh, let's see. We definitely need to like see, see the fallout of Sabine's actions. Like, oh, yeah. like she, she desperately needs to like get a reality check. And if Ahsoka can't do it, it has to be her her man's her bay. Like her man's is the only one who I think at this point can knock the sense into this girl. But it's already too late. But she got she got what she wanted. So like even if he yells at her, it is what it is. Yeah, but uh, but he he's the only one that can like get through to her if she's like become so stubborn, it especially could, yeah. towards ah Ahsoka. And it could lead to something like later, like make, probably next season where it's like she's faced with an option and she like makes a choice that he kind of similarly makes. So, yeah. Yeah. And like she chooses correctly. So, so there's that. And also, again, the idea of choices, like what I think like may happen like in episode eight is that she will have to make some type of 
some type of moral choice and it's gonna and she's gonna choose the correct option or even find a third option that somehow blends the other two and makes it work out Mm -hmm. don't know how but it is what it is uh i feel like we're getting a house of the dragon season one ending for uh end of uh soka oh damn oh yeah that's dang that's a good that's a good one that's a good analogy that's a good one uh but yeah no it's not the end so that's why i say that yeah yeah we did yeah and and for me i also think like I was thinking like it could be more like a rebels type of ending where mm. it ends with basically the the big thing happens, but it's like a major cliffhanger, and you're yeah. just like speculating, what do you do now? Mm. Um, and then also another two like major predictions is the fact that uh all the troopers that are in the that Thrawn has under his army, they're all undead. Ooh, could that tie into the greater power? I was thinking more like it ties to the great sisters. I mean, great mothers. Because mm. remember how Morocco was. Mm, that's, ooh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yep, so so all of them are undead. Because, uh, well, I, I don't know if Enoch is undead or not. But then he very well could be. I don't know, because Morocco was very sentient, <laughs> was the thing. Yeah, and so was Mor- and so was Enoch. To a, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but all the other troopers were not. I think he not about to bang. Like whoever he go up against, he about to show out. Yeah, and uh, it is raps for him. It's raps for for everybody. And then finally, uh, just the idea of like, yeah, Thrawn, Thrawn gonna be be big Thrawn and um uh yeah yeah, and that's Thrawn gonna be big Thrawn and he 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 ain't gonna lose this this uh yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's that's probably the big thing is that he's not going to lose in this uh season. He yeah. may face a setback, but he won't outright lose the war. Like maybe like he loses the Night Sisters, but the fact that he makes it back is so good. But we'll talk at the end of episode eight. We'll have again on Sword of the Jedi and make big predictions for like what happens next. Uh, also with that, fingers crossed, the writers are sitting down with the executives. So maybe we can have an idea of plans since everything has been paused for the last five to six months. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, writers, I, I know you're probably not listening, but uh, hey, in case y'all are, please, please bring us on. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm an invaluable resource, my guy. Yes. Listen, and I will, I will work for cheap. I mean, you wrote half of Secret Invasion, so. I, I will, I, I will, I'll do this for cheap. You, you know, you... It's like it's like whatever whatever you're paying the writers. Well, actually, what you should be paying the writers, you you can pay me half that. I I just I just want to make sure the ideas get out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just curious. So, anything else? Nah. Uh, Thrawn's gonna cook. Enoch about to cook. This the whole rest of the season about to be cooking. So, um, nah, I'm I'm good there. All right, cool. So again, every Mondays, we try to drop our weekly Ahsoka reviews uh, with other housekeeping. This Wednesday, we are aiming to have our boy Donovan on to talk about his uh, just comic and his journey. So I have that interview. Aliens stole my heart. So we'll, you'll, you can catch more of that on Wednesday. Also, we're going to be doing a collab. Uh, we don't know when the episode's coming out, but we're going to be with the Fusion Hall podcast, something that has been in the works since DreamCon. So super excited about that. We'll see how that goes. Give you more information as we have more information uh, so we can keep going forward with that. And then also uh, moving forward, we're also going to interview Midnight Comics later in the month of October. October is going to be our spooky month. So if you have an issue with that, it is what it is. Yeah, bro. All right, me. Bro. <laughs> so let's do uh, any plugs and get up out of here. All right, so we got ourselves our Instagram and our ex formerly known as Twitter account, as well as threads on the Blur City Twenty Two. Like, follow, subscribe, get access to to all of our content, be up to date on any information we may get and we may receive. We also have ourselves our Discord, which is linked in our Instagram and Threads page, to join our fine community of degenerates and just be able to see memes and and all that good jazz and just degeneracy. We also have our YouTube and our Patreon. It's, and we have we release episodes on our uh, YouTube page. And then, of course, donate a little extra chatter. You get some extra exclusive content uh, that that may or may not see, see the light of day, like our 
a character analysis of Nagato Uzumaki, aka Pain. Then we have ourselves our uh we have ourselves our email, blur 22 at gmail.com. That's where you submit questions for Q and A's. You can submit uh your geek out freak house, your random fan theories, and anything of the like. Uh and ask and then finally I'm the Rogue Jedi 21 on TikTok. However long we got TikTok left. And and that's all I got for y'all. What you have. Yeah, and with that uh, mailbag, like you mentioned, blurredcity22 at gmail.com. Hopefully we can have at the end of this season uh, an Ahsoka dedicated mailbag. So with that, blurredcity22 at gmail.com, as you mentioned. So my individual author pages, we have Mitri underscore dash for my Instagram. That's M-E-T-R-I underscore D-A-S-H. A-S-H. And then for my ex, formerly known as Twitter, we have at the mad dash 16. So with that, as we always like to say, it's not goodbye forever. This is goodbye for now. And that's the Blurred City Podcast. See ya later.